Namaste. Welcome to our TGIF Yin Yoga practice. So our Friday practices are long holds. So we'll be going in some long holds. Not every pose will be a long hold, but we'll kind of be weaving in, or in and out of some longer holding postures. So remember in a long hold pose doesn't mean it should be harder. Just always work at your edge. So let's begin laying on the blocks today so we can start with a nice big heart opening posture. Plus it, it really improves your posture in general because we don't want our shoulders coming together in front of us. We don't want the back rounding. We want to stand tall, shoulders back and down, chest forward a bit, right? That's a natural posture in the body. So place one block sideways, one straight up and down, and then sit in front of your blocks. I like to hold the block so as I lay back, I can put it right behind my chest and then place the other block behind your head and do what feels good with the arms and legs. So you can see my chest is the highest point of my pose. Okay, and then just relax. Let the arms relax by your sides. Let your legs straighten if it feels okay. You could always slide your feet together and let the knees fall open too. And then close your eyes. If you feel pinching in your lower back, you can simply lift the hips, tuck your tail, and then place the hips back down again. All right, let's tune in by closing the eyes and really noticing how the body feels in this shape. So letting the head go, letting the whole head get heavy on that block, swallowing to relax the throat, and let the teeth part. So we're not clenching the jaw at all. Mm -hmm. Relax your tongue. It might feel like it gets full as it relaxes. It's not something we do often in re everyday life, relaxing the tongue. So play with these bits of energy around your body, relaxing your cheeks on the inside of the mouth and then on the outside of the face. And then softening all around the eyes, the eyelids, eyebrows, and temples, the eyelids. And let your eyes just relax and let them fall back towards the sockets, towards the earth. Good. Let your eyebrows relax. Your forehead smooths out. So we're not trying to think and squeeze the, um, the forehead tight. Let it soften so the thoughts can just slowly swim in and out of the mind. So the word yoga means to yoke or to bring together body, mind, and spirit, if you will. So we're going to let the thoughts float in and out so we can shift our attention eventually down into the body, down to the breath. So feel the breath flowing through the nose right now. See if you can get a hold of the breath. You're not changing it, but just really be there with it. Standing beside the breath as it enters and exits the nostrils with your awareness. And just notice how it's moving today. Is it heavy or light? Does it feel rough or smooth? Is it dry or moist? Just become aware without judgment, the highest form of spiritual practice, self-observation without judging. So just try to work on that today and just watch the thoughts as they come and go because the thoughts are the judgment part. So if you can witness your thought and see that judgmental thought, just say, yeah, there's a judgmental thought. It's not who I am. And just let it go. Go back to your breath again. Go back to the body again and again throughout this class, back to sensation and breath. Those are your anchors into the present. So let your shoulders drop, arms get heavy, hands and fingers relax. Let your stomach relax, sinking down towards your lower back. Let your hips be heavy on the ground, your legs and your heels kind of digging down as they relax. And then let your feet and toes relax. Now scan back up your body from your toes, up your legs, up your stomach and chest, all the way back to the nose where the breath is moving. And feel it again and let this space be where you witness everything from. So it's like a watchtower. 
Okay, now we're gonna to begin to breathe a little bit deeper. So let's breathe into the belly, let it expand. Breathe out, you can either just relax or pull the belly muscles back a little to push out stale air. Breathing in, belly expands. Breathing out, belly contracts. And just continue like that, nice and slow and steady. Concentrating on your breath, on your body. Beautiful. Let's breathe into the ribs next. So as you inhale next, feel the ribs stretch a little bit. And as you breathe out, relax. Practice this wider breath. So instead of just forward with the belly, right? We're actually breathing out to the sides of the body. Lateral breathing. Stretching the intercostal muscles, the muscles that hold the rib cage together in the front. And those are kind of floating ribs, right? They can stretch open and then go back together. The back of the ribs are fused to the spine. Good. Now let's take it up to the chest. Breathing in, chest rises, breathing out, it falls. So similar to the stomach breath. Right, the chest is lifting up and then it's relaxing back down. Opening up your heart center today, this fourth chakra called the Anahata. It's all about love and compassion, right? But the opposite of love is fear. So fear can live here too. This is why you see people kind of bringing their shoulders together in front of them, maybe crossing their arms, body language right is to cross the arms to protect the heart right so we want to open the heart that's what we're doing in this pose is we're letting the heart open knowing that fear can only limit our experience of life we want to open to love and acceptance now let's fill the lungs like a glass filling the belly then the ribs and then the chest Empty the chest, empty the ribs, belly draws back. So you're filling bottom to top like a glass, pausing, called kambuka, emptying top to bottom, belly draws back, pause, kambuka. So it's a practice of pausing. And that's kind of what yin yoga is about, right? We get into our mat to pause in our life, to get tuned into the body and breath, to let go of thinking and planning, and the to-do list and work. And then just to be here, to be present with the body. Good, now stretch your arms up over the head and let the arms hang. So that connection between the body and the mind, we use the breath as the bridge to create that yoga experience, right? The yoking together of body, mind, and spirit. So we're breathing into the body, we're breathing out of the body. Now you might feel a nice stretch in your shoulders. I don't know if you ever experienced pain in this class, that's a sign you've gone too far, you just back out a little. Maybe in some case, you have to come out of the pose, but not usually, especially if you're really paying attention. And that's what this first five or 10 minutes of class is all about, paying attention, developing dharana concentration. Now let's put the feet flat. Let your knees fall to the right if you have room and just let your body follow. We're just rolling off the blocks into fetal position. And then just rest on your right side, maybe using your right arm as a pillow. And close your eyes in this beautiful position you were in in your mother's womb. Now let's set our intention here, right? Feeling the earth in front of you and under you, grounding you today. What do you need from your practice? Ask for it. say thank you for it. So today I'm asking for my body to feel healthy and strong because I feel pretty sore this morning. My lower back was bothering me last night, right? So there's no right or wrong in these intentions. Use the hands in front of you. Come on up slowly to seated meditation for a moment. Now this is where you can really check out your outer rotation 
and see how open you are. So often um, students have their knees way up here, especially men, just because they have a, a more narrow pelvic girdle, right? But we can work on that and that's okay. But just notice, right, yourself without judgment. Where are my knees in this pose? Put your hands together at your heart center. Tell your body you love it right where it is today. You're not here to judge it, but to take care of it. Remember, you have consciousness in every cell of your body. It's listening. Let's bring the hands up to the forehead to touch. Thoughts will be there, but they're not who you are. Be the witness to your thoughts. Hands back to the heart center. Let's practice OM together. O-M. Breathe in. Oh. Okay, so sweet discomfort is the goal. Okay, so we're going to get into an uncomfortable pose, right? It's supposed to be uncomfortable. That's how we know it's working. So if you need some support, take two blocks like this and just put them next to each other and sit on the blocks. And I do this too, even though I I'm pretty flexible in this area of my body. <clears throat> so I'm gonna sit up on my blocks and then I'm gonna stretch my legs out into a V. So yes, we're starting with dragonfly position, which is a forward fold depending on your body. So we use the blocks if we have tight hamstrings or the lower back um, is rounding it all. When you sit flat on the floor, you wanna open up the front body here, right? So maybe even bringing your arms, elbows in, palms forward and pulling the shoulder blades together, pulling the backs of the hands behind you, and even lifting through the chin, feel the front body, right? And that's how we want the body to stay here. And then you can relax your legs. If you're sitting on the floor, you're welcome to put block a block behind each knee too, but that still might propel you backwards. So it is probably better to sit on a block if you need some support. So just keeping that idea of the chest staying open you can start to fold forward if you have space, but try not to start closing off your chest, right? Stay open to love today. And when you find the depth that you need to stay, that's where the body stops naturally, you can put the block underneath your elbows in front of you, or two blocks. You can stack blocks, and maybe your forehead rests against one. Get creative with your props. All right, now since this is our first pose, it's a little bit harder. And since this is a challenging pose anyway, we'll stay just for five minutes, okay? And that can feel like a long time if you have tight hamstring. Remember, you can slowly come out of the pose a little bit, and you can slowly go into the pose a little bit throughout it. It's called playing your edge. So the first principle is to find five on a scale of one to 10 in your sensation. Where is it? If you're already there, stillness is the second principle. In the stillness, the magic happens because we're not engaging muscle. Let the muscle go. And then the third principle, or tattva, which means thatness in um, Pali, the language of the Buddha. Um, the third principle means is to stay for time, rather. So we're gonna stay in it for time and it takes time for this tissue to untangle. This tight tissue is typically the fibers are tangled a bit. They're maybe going sideways instead of sliding next to each other. Okay, so as we put pressure on the tissue, we take that tangledness out and those tissues start to line up again and we feel the body stretching out. All right, let's keep breathing. Nice, slow, steady breaths. So that's the first 90 seconds, and we don't want to have to think about the time or be in a pose so deeply that that's where the mind is staying for the whole practice is worrying about when am I get to come out? When do I get to come out? I want you to enjoy it. And so if you work at your edge and you're breathing softly in and out, and it might be different in this pose than it was when you were laying on your back. Just be aware of that. Just stay with your breath and let that breath be this healing remedy 
this morning or tonight or today, whenever you're practicing this class, and let it heal your body. Like for me, it's helping me to feel healthy and strong, right? The breath, the poses. This should be a feel like a healing experience, not torture. Okay, so we're halfway there. Let's relax, focus on letting the thoughts move through your mind. Let them swim through, be the witness, find them interesting, but try not to get involved. Bring your attention to your breath and your body. All right, now we're going to slowly come up. And then I like to use my hands behind my knees to kind of pull the knee up. Place the feet flat, and you're going to have them as wide as your mat, and just let your knees tip side to side, hands behind your back for support. So that's just a nice counter pose to our dragonfly, our forward fold position. So we started with the back bend on the blocks, really open the front body, and then we stretch the back body a little bit. Now let's place the feet flat and the hands flat, and just see if we can lift the hips up a little bit, locking the arms. If that feels good, you can go further, lifting the hips towards the sky. Otherwise, stay where you are, and when it starts to feel a little strong, come down. Don't wait till you're in panic mode, right? Feet face forward, hip distance. Let the head fall back if you want to go all the way. We'll meet in seated meditation when you're through. You can shake out your hands after this one. We're building strength in the wrist with our reverse table, but we want to shake it out so things stay in balance. Right? Just shake it out, roll the shoulders a little bit, maybe one at a time. Okay, feel that upper back, feel the shoulders and turn your head side to side to tune into the neck a little bit. And let's take a cleansing breath. So we breathe in through the nose, big breath. We breathe out with a sigh through the mouth. Let's try it. Breathe in. Ah. That's, that makes me smile just to do that. Ah. <laughs> okay, let's come to table pose, hands and knees. Take the blocks in front of you. And nothing like a smile for no reason, right? That's how I feel when I'm out hiking. I just smile, just looking around, taking in the smells, right? So let's plant the hands 
Shoulder width, fingers spread out, middle finger forward. Knees are hip distance on the blanket. The blanket's wider than the mat here. So we want a blanket under the knees so we can slide the knees open eventually in our frog pose. All right, let's inhale, tail and chin go up. Exhales, tail and chin go down, All right? Just let your spine move with the tail and the chin. All right, so your neck is part of your spine, cervical. We have the upper back that we've been working on, especially in that back bend, that's your thoracic. And then the lower back is the lumbar spine. And it's one of the most flexible parts of your body, your lower back and neck. So I wanna be a little careful with these areas, just really listening, tuning in and breathing. Good, so we're massaging the disc. Just think of those little tissues, those little cushions, the pads between the bones of your spine. There's 33 bones. And there's cushions between. That's what we're massaging right now, front and back, squeezing out tension and toxins. And then as you move in the other direction, the blood flows back into those little areas, along with all the spine tissue, the muscles along the sides of the spine, three on each side. All right. Beautiful. Nice work, guys. Now we're going to slide the right knee up to swan, right knee to the right wrist, right toes move to the left. And then just let your right hip drop over to the right, which means the back knee, the left knee is going to bend. So we want the left knee out towards the left side of the room. You don't have to move it. Just let it be naturally where it wants to be. And then we want to line up the thigh with the side of your mat and the shin with the top of the mat. Okay, so let's do that. Get it all lined up and then see if you can relax your leg. So you might be falling out to the right, which is pretty typical because that means your IT band is tight. So remember when we were in seated meditation, um, if your knees were high, this is the pose that's gonna help your knees get closer to the floor over time. So if you're really falling out to the right, you have two choices. You could go out to the right, just bringing your blocks to the right, maybe stacking them up and just starting to go with it. This is more of a deer pose, or you could pull your right foot back and that's gonna help your hips to kind of square off again. And that's not important that the hips are square. That's just what happens when you pull your foot back. Now, for those of you that want to keep the foot forward, you might start going forward over your right thigh, bringing your elbows down to blocks, whatever feels right, but make sure your muscle stays relaxed as you fold into it. All right, let's get into our first long hold. This is gonna be 10 minutes. Let's breathe in and out through the nose. Find the edge, get still, play your edge, come in and out if you need to, throughout the posture, and then stay for the 10 minute hold. Now we'll have a choice to switch to shoelace at that five minute mark. You can stay here for the whole posture, it's up to you. Okay, now really try to settle into it this first minute of the pose. Just scanning your body, noticing where you might be gripping, holding anything in or up. I just realized my right foot was engaged, right? And it's so subtle. You really have to pay attention. You don't really notice, maybe wiggling those right toes, making sure the right foot is relaxed, the right thigh. And then relax your stomach too. Because oftentimes in these poses, we're engaging our stomach muscles and not aware of it. And then to work on the upper body in the pose, because we are holding ourselves up, just try to let the shoulders go. Try to let your neck go, maybe using a block under the forehead. And you could also just let your head hang. That might feel nice. Stretching out the back of the cervical spine, the neck. Okay, that's our first minute. Let's keep breathing, adjusting according to how we feel, loving our body right where it is. So I looked up love, just the word love on Wikipedia, just to see what it says. And here's what it says on Wikipedia. Love encompasses a range of strong and positive emotion and mental states from the most sublime virtue or good habit, the deepest impersonal affection to the simplest pleasure, right? A smile, the smell of the woods. An example of this range of meanings is that the love of a mother differs from the love of a spouse, which differs from the love for food. 
Most commonly, love refers to a feeling of strong attraction and emotional attachment. So in yoga, we learn about detaching, right? To let things flow because we know through these practices and through the study of yoga and Buddhism that things are in a constant state of change. This is called aniche, right? The impermanence of all things. So yes, we can have an emotional attachment to something, but also know that everything is changing, right? And to let things go when they naturally fall away and maybe grieving those things, which is very natural feeling when we lose something and then to move on with the understanding of a Nietzsche. Keep on breathing. Now, if you need more pressure, you just simply keep going down further as your body opens. Eventually, maybe laying right over that right thigh. Or maybe you're on the floor on the outside of the thigh for more of the uh, deer pose. You can also start to straighten the back leg a little bit at a time to increase the sensation in the front leg. Wiggle your toes, make sure you're still relaxed if you're going in deeper. Feeling your breath below your nose, letting your thoughts flow. Paying attention to the sensation. So it hovers around a five on a scale of one to 10. Medium pressure. If you would like to switch to shoelace, remember this is twice as hard, so only go there if this pose is pretty easy for you. The first one, the swan. You can pull your right foot back a little and then just bring that right knee to the mat, to the blanket if you can. Come up to table and lift the left knee and tuck it behind the right. Spread your feet out while your hips are still forward. Squeeze the knees together as you crawl back, placing a block under your seat if that helps you to be more comfortable in the pose. Remember, sweet discomfort. If your muscles are engaging or you're feeling pain, then please use the block. And if that still doesn't work, you can just simply go back to swan. All right, let's relax and breathe. Right knees on top, left knees on the bottom. Feet are on the opposite side of the hips. Double outer rotation. Now find your breath because the breath is the platform of this practice. If you can't breathe, you've gone too far. You can fold forward if you need more pressure. Just bring your body forward, maybe block or blocks under your elbows in front of you. Or you could also go to the right side if that's more comfortable. So this is a nice side body stretch, good for your um, standing half moon positions in your Bikram classes good for half moon in your vinyasas, your triangles, your side angles, right? Really stretching out through the side of the body, the side of the spine. Now, if you wanna work on your neck, you can just let your head hang and keep your arm by your side. If you wanna add the shoulder, you can bring your left arm up and maybe straight up to the sky or over your head. What feels good, keep breathing. We have three minutes left in this pose. So really letting gravity do the work as much as you can in this class. This is a passive yoga practice. It's a cool yoga practice. So 
We want to make sure the body is cool when we enter the practice and the poses. So we don't want to warm up before the practice. Let the muscles stay cool so the joint tissue takes on the pressure. So you have options during this practice. I'll give you different options for your different body type and flexibility level. So just really honor yourself right where you are today and you'll get everything you need out of this practice. So you stay in the side bend or wherever you are as long as you want, right? You're deciding by how you feel. Now, if you'd like some eagle arms today for your shoulders, sitting up straight, arms to a T, right elbow under left, cross at the wrist, palms face each other. So this is one of those pretzel positions. You just keep breathing, paying attention to how you feel. Just listening to the body. Feel the breath by your nose. And so if it's hard to do either of those, right, you might be too far in the pose. The sensation might be so strong that it needs all of your focus. So see if you can let go. Just be in a place of sweet discomfort. And you stay here if you're in the eagle, just as long as it feels good. And when you come out, try to do it slowly and carefully. Maybe rolling the wrists around, rolling the shoulders a bit, turning the head side to side again, just checking in. The neck maybe up and down with the chin. Okay. And then the third option here before we end our 10 minute hold is to bring the left arm up for Gomukhasana arms. Pat yourself in the back. Grab the left elbow with the right hand and just relax. You can give the elbow a little pull back if you need more pressure. Otherwise, just let it be where it is. Left arm completely limp, right hand holding it in place, working on the shoulder. Keep on breathing. It's 30 seconds left in our pose. So they say the poses that you dislike the most are the ones you need the most because most likely they're the most challenging for you. So try to turn the way you look at it. Try to turn it around. Okay, and we'll let the arms go down again. Just roll the shoulders a little, maybe shake the hands. Maybe some shrugs with the shoulders. And then we're going to bring the legs out in front of us. So. You can use your hands if you're coming from shoelace to take that front leg out and just let the leg stretch in front of you for a moment. Notice what you feel, close your eyes. I feel a little tingling in the bottoms of my feet, probably from stimulating the legs so much in that last pose. And you can bounce your knees on the mat a little, just gently. And then again, windshield wipers side to side. See how that feels now. Now we're gonna work with the top of the foot. So if you're someone like me that has to stand for hours and hours, this is the position your ankle is in. So the front of the ankle gets very tight. Or if you're a runner, right? The top of the ankle can get tight. So we're gonna work on that right now. We're gonna get into half frog. So you can place a block under your seat. Again, you could do two of them, like I demonstrated earlier, and sit up on the block, especially if the top of your feet are kind of tight. Now what we're gonna do is pull the right foot back and stretch the top of the right foot ankle. You can straighten the left leg. You can bring the left leg out to the left to create space between the two knees. Okay, this is half frog pose. Now make sure it's not so strong in the top of the foot that you're engaging muscle, right, in the leg or foot. And then for those of you that might be a little bit more flexible, maybe you're sitting on the ground, and it feels pretty good, or you're even up high, you just want to relax your upper body, you could lean forward a little bit, maybe putting blocks under your elbows. Now, this is going to be a short hold. This is only three minutes, but it's a strong one. So let's feel the top. This is ankle stretch for the foot, but this is also an inner rotation of your right hip and your right thigh is stretching deeply. So just listen. You can always lean over to the left if it gets too intense. Taking some pressure off the foot, knee and ankle. 
And then even bringing the leg back in a little bit can take pressure off the knee. All right, let's relax and breathe. Three minute ankle stretch. Holding forward if you need more. All right, just letting your body decide how far does it wanna go? Where does it stop naturally? Prop yourself there and just let the muscles go. Good, nice steady breaths. Letting the head hang or maybe propping it on your hands or another block. Let's slowly come up or just grab a hold of the right ankle. If you're sitting on a block, just be careful. You can lean to the left and just release that foot. So we're just reversing out of it. Then you can come back down to the floor, bounce the knees a little bit, see how you feel. Just noticing if there's any sensation there. And then maybe some more reverse or um, windshield wipers side to side. All right, we'll get into our reverse table. Second one in just a moment. Beautiful. Now let's put the hands and feet flat. Let's just squeeze, see how it feels now, dropping the head back. Remember you can come up just a little bit at a time, locking the arms you're building, bone density, flexibility of the shoulders and the neck, strength in the core, right? And then when you come down, just shake out your hands again, get the tension out of the wrist. Good, roll the shoulders. We'll just take another one of those cleansing breaths. Let's take a big breath in. Ah, all right, I'd like you to go into table with your blocks at the top of the mat. We're gonna switch directions and then come back to the second side of this flow. So hands and knees are flat, right? Hip distance, shoulder width. Inhale, exhale, a few rounds, cats and cows. Up and down, nice and slow, side to side, whatever feels good. Beautiful. Now let's get to thread the needle next. Let's bring the right arm up and place the right arm on the floor behind the left wrist. Okay, shoulder down, right side of the face or head, hips stay over the knees so you're not putting all your weight jamming into that shoulder. So keep your hips over your knees and just try to relax. So if this is the first time you've done this or you have shoulder issues, just listen to the body. Try to get out of that fear and just breathe and listen. The body will tell you how far to go and if you need to come out. You just have to bypass the thoughts to get into the truth of the situation. What does it feel like? We'll be here for two minutes. 
If you need some support, blanket folded up underneath the side of your head might help you to feel more comfortable. If you want more pressure, you can lift the top arm and thread it behind the back. Okay, just two minutes here, really relaxed because it's a short hold, it goes by fast. Try to let go, breathe softly in and out. We're just letting gravity do the work again. Just a few more breaths, just really enjoying the peace and quiet of your body and breath in this moment. The softness and kindness towards yourself that you're practicing right now. Self-love, self-care. Okay, left hand on the floor. Gently pull the right arm up and feel the stretch. Feel the chest and upper back twist in the opposite direction and then switch hands whenever you're ready, no rush. Right hand down and the left hand goes up. Just breathe, feel the breath. Now we're gonna set the left foot back here. So maybe placing the right knee under you more. Left foot goes back. Right toes come behind like a kickstand. And then we just let the left arm fall back. Feel the stretch. Keep breathing. Mm-hmm. Remember, we'll even it out with the second side. Let your head hang, maybe bringing the arm over the ear. Remember, we switch sides, so be careful with the shoulder. Shaking your head, yes and no, if that feels nice. Beautiful. Now we're gonna go into the left side of dragon. So as you come down, we're gonna step that left foot way up to the top of the mat. Slide your back knee back on the blanket and then place a block in front of your right knee. So wherever it helps you to stay up, you could also put the short end against your thigh. That helps with just the corner of the block against the mat, blanket. So play around, see if you can find some place that feels right. We're just gonna lay over the front leg for the first minute. Now you might need a block under your right elbow, especially if you need room for your chest, just shift your chest inside the knee, but keep the left elbow or th um, shoulder rather against your left thigh. All right, back toes can curl under. Mine just did that naturally. That's probably because I have band-aids all over my feet. I got bitten by fire ants yesterday <laughs> out in my yard and they're still stinging. Keep on breathing, nice slow breaths. Good, you can let your head hang or hold it up, whatever feels good. It's just a minute to try to start to understand, feel, experience this part of your body, right? We're working into the extension of the hip now, stretching the front of that back thigh. 
Now let's take blocks under each hand, straight up and down, and then lift your chest up slowly, creating another back bend in the lower back this time. And a deeper stretch in the front of the right thigh. Now it's only a couple minutes, so just keep breathing. Back toe and back foot might want to point here, or it might want to stay turned under to protect the knee. You could place your left elbow against your left thigh. That helps. So let's keep breathing slowly in and slowly out. So we kind of take our attention away from the thoughts into the breath, into the body. We keep pulling it this way into the present. Using the breath by the nose, using the sensation within the body. Developing our concentration abilities, our dharana. Good. And as you relax, you'll start to feel the muscles just soften and the ligaments begin to take on the pressure that connect the bone together in the front of your hip in this case. This is where your stomach and spleen meridians are as well. Good, keep breathing. One more minute here. You can lift the chin if you want to start working with your cervical spine a little and drop the head forward. This is the back bend and forward folding of your neck. Massaging the tissue specifically in the vertebrae of your cervical spine. Seven vertebrae there. You can also turn your head side to side. That's the twisting of your neck. to do everything slow in this class so you don't hurt yourself and also just to develop that awareness now we're going to go to low dragon so put your blocks in front of you you can use your elbow on your knee or go back to baby dragon and then you can stack your blocks inside the foot or have them sideways and then place your elbows down on the blocks slowly Maybe a couple inch step out to the left with your left foot. Just making room for that um, left shoulder inside the knee. Okay, let's stay here for a little while and breathe. Feel the inner thigh stretching. Maybe you feel it someplace else. It's okay. We're all going to experience these poses differently. So listen to your body. A little bit more about love and then we're going to get into a little love philosophy love is considered to be both positive and negative with its virtue representing human kindness compassion and affection as the unselfish loyal and benevolent concern for the good of another and its vice representing human moral flaw akin to vanity selfishness a more preparatory and egotism potentially leading people into a type of mania, obsessiveness, or codependency. They may also describe compassionate and affectionate actions towards other humans, oneself, animals. In its various forms, love acts as a major facilitator of interpersonal relationships and owing to its central psychological importance, is one of the most common themes in the creative arts. Love has been postulated to be a function that keeps human beings together against menaces and to facilitate the continuation of the species. Ancient Greek philosophers identified six forms of love, essentially familial love, which is called storge, friendly love or platonic love called philia, Romantic love, eros, self-love, philotia, and guest love, xenia, and then divine love, agape. So you've probably heard of these before. Okay, 
right, let's keep breathing. seconds to go. This is a seven minute hold. So just holding an extra minute today to go deeper into the hip flexors and quadriceps. Nice steady breaths. Okay, let's straighten the arms. And slowly, keeping that right knee where it is, just pull the hips out of it. And then once you get out of it, feel the flush of energy through that right thigh. You can bow over your left leg a little bit to stretch the back of the left leg again, like we did in our first pose, dragonfly. And then we'll meet in child's pose. When you're ready, just taking the left leg back, sitting against the feet. You might notice your right foot feels more stretched out than the left, and then just bow. Placing your forehead on a block, if you like. And just melt in. Feel the front of the right thigh a little more open, the right leg, the right foot. All those poses concentrated on the right side. So we're going to do the left side now. Okay, let's rise back to table, hands and knees. We'll just gently slide the left knee up to the left wrist. Scoot the left toes over to the right. And then let your left hip come down to the left side, bending the right knee, pull it up, and then line up your thigh with the side of the mat and see how high that left foot wants to go. We don't want it any higher than the knee. All right, so remember the options. You could go out to the left for deer pose if that feels like where your body wants to go. Elbows can be on blocks or the floor. You can go forward for swan, All right? And you could stay seated too, pull the left foot back. It's really a struggle for you. So please just honor yourself. It's not a contest. There's no goals here. Let yourself be where you are with love and compassion for your body and for yourself. So I looked up natural remedies for fire ant or ant bites and I used honey, I used lemon. I was out of lavender, so I didn't get to use lavender, but this morning I tried tree, tea tree oil, didn't really affect it at all. Um, but the uh, Benadryl for sure, Benadryl cream helped. And ice was the best thing. So those are the things that they recommend if you happen to get bitten by ants, by your ants, or any other kind of ant. Okay, let's keep breathing. As you find your edge, get still, relax, and let go as much as you can. So we're rotating the thigh outward. It's rolling outward. This is outward, outer rotation of your hip joint. One of the six directions it can move. The back leg, which we've already worked in inner rotation with our half frog, is in an inner rotation a bit, especially the higher the chest is. So as you go down, you'll start to feel the sensation in the right thigh maybe uh, dissipate a bit. Okay, we're already two minutes in. Let's keep breathing.
So self-love in Greek is called amour de soul. It's actually in French. It's a concept in the philosophy of Jean Jacques Rousseau that refers to the kind of self-love that humans share with brute animals and predate the appearance of society. So Rousseau maintained in Emile that amour de soi is the source of human passion as well as the origin and the principle of all other desires. It's associated with the notion of self-preservation as a natural sentiment that drives every animal to watch over its own survival. So this is why I thought it was so interesting and important. The philosopher stated that this type of love is prominent at the stage where our, our faculties are not developed, hence considered still one of a brute. So when we're children, when we haven't developed all the fear yet, this concept forms part of Rousseau's argument that the gulf between humans and the rest of animal creation does not exist. Now, if you'd like to go into the shoelace, pull the left foot back a little bit, come on up to your left knee, and maybe just stay where you are in that swan. If you're new to this practice, that's where I suggest you stay until it gets easy. Lift the right knee, tuck the right knee behind the left first. Kind of tighten the knees together, spread your feet, and then gently crawl back, placing the block under your seat. Now, this is a double outer rotation. Second side might feel easier just because you've already done the first side in both of the poses on the right. So now we're working left leg, left side of swan, left knee on top, and shoelace. So you can stay seated, you can fold forward, you could also go out to the left if you need, if you like to get a nice side body stretch on the other side, especially if you did the right side. All right, so we're going to the left. We're stretching the right side of the waist. We want to go to the left because the left knee's on top, so that hip stays nice and grounded at the right hip. Good. Just relax. Remember, you can let the neck hang. Just stretch the side of the neck, or bring the arm up or over your head to get the shoulder involved. So do what feels good. You could also just simply fold forward in the pose to increase the intensity in the hip joints. Nice steady breaths. We have four more minutes in this pose, so take your time. Enjoy the practice. Breathe deeply, softly and sweetly. This is self-love, self-care. So acts committed out of amour de soi tend to be for individual well-being. It is considered always good and always in conformity with order, for it is not malicious because amour de soi, as self-love, does not involve pursuing one's self-interest at the expense of others. One is justified in ignoring the well-being of others if his well-being is materially threatened. The sentiment does not compare oneself with others, but is concerned solely with regarding oneself as an absolute and valuable existence. It is related to an awareness of one's future and can restrain the present impulse. I think he was on to something there, right? That we have value, that our job here is to take care of ourselves, take care of our health. Yes, to take care of each other, but not if we're hurting ourselves by doing that. Now, if you'd like to go into eagle arms, bring your arms to a T. This time the left elbow goes under the right. Palms face each other. Good. You can interlace your fingers if they reach, or just keep the fingers straight. 
What feels good? That's what matters. Keep on breathing. You're going to stay here as long as you like. When you do come out, just rolling the shoulders a bit, maybe rolling the wrists, opening, closing the hands, turning the head side to side, up and down, whatever feels nice. Then we can get into the Gomogasana, second side if you like, right arm up, pat yourself in the back, grab the right elbow with the left hand, and just relax. Feel the stretch in your right shoulder. Try to relax the right arm completely if you can. I like to tip my head forward in this one. When you're ready to come out of this, do it slowly and carefully. Don't want to make any fast movements in this class. And then roll the shoulders around again. See how it feels. Maybe shrugging the shoulders up by the ears a little bit. All right, now take that top leg off. Let it stretch out in front of you. Bouncing the knees gently on the mat. And some windshield wipers side to side. Just see how it feels now. Good. Let's take our third reverse table. Remember, you can always go to the ground for bridge instead if you prefer. Laying on your back instead, walking your heels in. You could do this for all three, then squeezing the butt to lift. Arms by your sides, palms down. I like to do it that way now. I feel better on my shoulders, but some people like to clasp the hands in bridge and pinch the shoulders together. Do what feels good, pushing down with feet and hands if you're in reverse table. Dropping the head back if that feels good. good. Now we're going to meet seated. So you can rock yourself up if you went to bridge, holding behind the knees. And then just shake out your hands, roll your shoulders again. Okay, let's take a cleansing breath together. Breathe in. Let it go. <sighs> back to hands and knees for the second part of this flow. So come to table pose. Oopsie. Actually, we're going to sit on the block. I knew I was forgetting something. We're going to sit up on the block and we're going to do the second side of the frog. So I'm going to turn this way so it's easier for you to see. We're going to straighten the left foot, the right leg, this time pulling the left foot back into inner rotation. All right. And then we're going to slide that right foot away just as far as it feels good. It might feel good to keep it straight in front of you and that's okay. Now remember, this is a short hold, but this is a three minute ankle stretch, right? We're really opening up the top of the foot. Most people are tight in this area. <clears throat> so I think it's a really beneficial pose. Now be careful with your knee. We did just do the um, out, outside edge of the leg in our um, swan and shoelace. Now we're working more of the quadricep, the top and inner thigh. Let's find the edge, sweet discomfort, get still and breathe. See what feels good. Now you always want to keep your toes pointed, bottom of the foot facing up and the heel close to the hip so the knee doesn't twist at all in this pose. Just listening to your body, feeling your breath, watching your mind, letting the thoughts go. Short hold, so try to find some place where you can relax and be still.
speaking of self-preservation this morning, I just, I don't know, I was moving around and making breakfast and I just started thinking about, about getting older, you know, and thinking about taking care of my body in a way that's going to help me to be able to do all the things I love to do into my older age. All right, so this is one of those type, types of practice, if you do it right, it's really going to preserve the body to keep it healthy and your joints strong, because that's typically what happens with elderly people, they end up, you know, hurting the joint of the body, then you can't move, <laughs> and then your body starts to deteriorate. So this is so good for so many reasons. So I was really excited to practice today just thinking about it in that way. All right, let's go ahead, slowly come up. Remember, I want you to lean a little bit to the right. If you're on the blocks, just be careful, but guide the leg out front. You don't wanna fling it. You don't wanna make a fast movement after twisting like that. And then let the leg settle for a second. Coming down off your blocks, bouncing the knees and maybe some windshield wipers again side to side. Beautiful. All right, now let's go to those hands and knees now and begin that second part of the flow, bringing your blocks to the top of the mat so you have them handy. And then just a few cats and cows up and down, nice and slow and steady. So in case you're wondering what this black blob is in front of me on the floor, it's Daisy. <laughs> She's doing good. She's all healed up from her exciting adventure in the woods. Now this time we'll lift the left arm up and place the left arm on the floor with the palm up right behind the right wrist. And then just feel that beautiful stretch in the upper back. It feels so good. Find a place that it feels good for you. Maybe you need a blanket underneath the side of your head. Keep your hips over your knees. Maybe you need to lift the right arm and tuck it behind the back. Where is your five on a scale of one to 10 today? Okay, we'll stay for two minutes starting now. Let's keep breathing. Just a couple more breaths. All right, right hand in front of the face. Let's sweep that left arm up and feel the counter pose. 
Feel the upper back, the ribs, the chest. Where do you feel it? The neck. And then switch sides when you're ready. Left hand down, right hand up. Remember to move slow. Good. Notice the side might feel easier than the first. Let's step the right foot back this time and open up like a star. Just letting that right arm fall back, letting the head hang, letting gravity do the work if you need support in this pose. You're welcome to put a block underneath your left hand on the floor. It'll make it much easier on the wrist and shoulder. Good. You can shake your head yes and no, maybe bringing the arm over the head if that feels good. Nice steady breaths. Beautiful. Now we're going to get into the second side of dragon by coming down and taking a big step forward with that back foot. The right foot steps up, big step, maybe sliding it more forward if you didn't get very far, sliding the back knee back. Want the front knee over the front ankle and we're just laying over the front thigh with our hands on either side of the foot. Now you can put a block in front of that left knee for support for the hip. And we'll just stay here for one minute. So let's keep breathing. Maybe a block goes underneath the left elbow straight up and down so you can shift your chest inside that right knee and have space for your chest. You just have your shoulder resting against the knee instead. Okay, do what feels comfortable for you, for your upper body. Now we're just starting the stretch in the front of the left hip now. Remember, this is all left leg now. Keep on breathing. You can hold your head up or maybe let the head dangle if that feels nice. Back toes can point or flex. We're going to go to high dragon, blocks under the hands, lift the chest, and then maybe point the back toes if that feels better, or turn them under if you're changing. Your elbow can rest against your right thigh. Let's breathe. Now feel the intensity in the front of that left hip. It's stronger, right? It becomes more intense as we lift our body up away from that front leg. So now we're getting that really good stretch in the hip flexors and quadriceps. Feel the breath by your nose, maybe a little cervical spine work while you're here. Up and down, side to side. So we do three high and three low, and one in our baby dragon. So we add, it adds up to seven minutes in this pose. So nice long hold here. And if it gets too strong, you just lean forward more, right? You could even go back to baby dragon if that was what you needed. Keep on breathing.
Okay, now let's lean forward onto the right side. Put the blocks inside your front foot, whatever level feels good. Climb your elbows down to the blocks, and then you can walk your right foot out to the right if you need a little room for that right shoulder. If this is too strong, feel free to, to go back to the baby dragon position. Just laying over, maybe even just putting your right shoulder on top of that right knee can take enough pressure off for you to be at your edge. Sweet discomfort. Okay. Three minutes down here. Let's keep breathing. So according to Buddhism, in Buddhism, kama or karma is sensual sexual love, and it is an obstacle on the path to enlightenment since it is selfish. Karuna is compassion and mercy, which reduces the suffering of others. It is complementary to wisdom and is necessary for enlightenment. Advesa and metta are benevolent love. This love is unconditional and requires considerable self-acceptance. This is quite different from ordinary love, which is usually about attachment and sex and which rarely occurs without self-interest. Instead, in Buddhism, it refers to detachment and unselfish interests in others' welfare. Okay, one more minute, keep breathing. Make your intuitive adjustments, listening to your body, watching your mind, and stay present with your breath. All right, let's straighten the arms. We're gonna pull the hips back and bow over that right leg again, feeling the flushing out of that left thigh where we were just putting all the pressure on. We'll meet in child's whenever you're done, no rush. Back to child's pose, noticing how it feels now. A little bit different now that both hips are nice and open. Just take a few breaths. Now let's just go ahead, crawl forward to the belly from here and prop ourselves up onto the elbows for Sphinx and Seal Pose. So you can rock your hips side to side if that feels good. Maybe letting the head hang or placing a block straight up and down for the forehead to rest against. Let your body decide what feels good.
Now, if you'd like, you could put a block under each elbow to make this back bend stronger. Just for another minute or so. Keep on breathing wherever you go. And then steel pose. You can place your hands flat in front of your elbows. Squeeze your bum. You want to push the tail down and then lift the elbows up. You can separate your hands as wide as your mat if you want, even turning the fingers out in the angle. But make sure you're spreading the back bend from your lower back up through the ribs, through the chest, through the neck. You're not just dumping all that pressure into your low back. Good. When you're done, go back again to child's, no rush. And this time in child's, see if you can turn your toes under before you sit back on your heels and then bend forward. Getting a nice toe stretch here. Keep on breathing wherever you are. And then if you want more of the toes, you can straighten your arms, keeping your hands in front of you. And even more, bringing your hands up onto your thighs. Waking up those six lower body meridians right where they begin or end in the toes. When you're finished with that, find your way to your seat and place the blocks behind you like we started class. And just sit right in front of the blocks and lay back again. Remember, this is for your heart, to help your heart chakra open, to help with your posture. So now here at the end of class, you're welcome for our Shavasana to bring the arms to a T or maybe just let them hang over your head for the few minutes that we'll be here. That's gonna make it much stronger. So you decide, you could also just lay them right by your sides with the palms up. Okay, let's take a cleansing breath together. Inhale. Ah, just let go. Close your eyes. And let love and compassion awaken in your heart center today through this work, through this study of agape, of philatia, self-love, divine love. Let the breath breathe you as you relax again into your jaws, into your forehead, into your eyes. Let everything soften. Let your shoulders and arms go, your hands and fingers. Let your stomach relax as the hips and legs get heavy. And let your feet and toes relax. And just feel into your body. Feel the breath just rolling in and out like beautiful waves in the ocean. Allowing the thoughts to come in and out of your mind like clouds through the sky above. Let them flow back.
Inhale, let's start to deepen each breath slowly. Good, feeling the breath by your nose, letting this be your anchor to the present throughout your day, throughout your life. Skim the thumbs across the fingertips, feel your sensations wide awake now. You're more present with yourself and each other. Stretch the arms up and over your head if you haven't done that yet. Only if it feels good. And just take a few more deep breaths. When you're ready, place your feet flat and let your knees fall to the left and just roll over to the left side. Say thank you to Mother Earth before you begin to rise. Eventually finding your way into seated meditation where we started class, where we'll end class, where we return throughout this class. This is the supreme pose. Place your hands at the heart center. Close your eyes, touching your thumbs against that heart chakra. Maybe you'd prefer to place your hands flat over that place of love and compassion, one on top of the other. Thank yourself for being here, for practicing self-love and self-care today. Take this love out into the world. We need it. Okay, let's seal it in with an ohm. Breathe in. Oh, oh. The light in me bows to the light in you. Namaste. Have a beautiful day.